Brethren, can we stand at this time and invite Brother Ashley to come? Turn with me to number 71 and let's sing the lovely hymn. Into thy presence, Lord, we come. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, not by the works we have done, but by thy grace and thy grace alone. Into thy Thank presence Lord. we come. Amen. Into thy
But then I also got another letter from a man in, I would say, the United States of America. Nobody knows where he's from, but he too had a comment to make about the messages going out. And he made this statement on last week's message. He said, I was able to see Brother Ashley via video for the first time. And he said, Pastor Ashley said in the 13th minute in his message, we are in the millennium. Now we know that's error. That's right. We have ample witnesses here that no, Brother Ashley does not believe that he's in the millennium. And of course he had to attack the community. And he has written this to me, or written it to Brother Paul, in reply to the messages that were sent out. So these messages are going out, and they're falling on the ears of many, many people. But we want to be a witness, that's all, to the things that were spoken by the seventh angel. And this man emphasizes so much where Brother Branham said, don't change anything. And that's a direct quote, but he never finished it. And we're going to look at that quote at the end of the message. But let us stand as we read the Word of God uh, from Luke 21. Now this might be a, a strange thing, but last week there was great confirmation on the message. And God's my witness. Uh, I sat down there and I thought, my, that was phenomenal last week. Where Brother Steve came into the hall and... and, and uh, spoke about the very message I was going to preach. And he came into the hall again and I thought, I wonder if that could reoccur, if that could ever happen again. It was such a blessing last week. And he came into the hall and the first thing he said, now Brother Ashley, that scripture in Matthew 21, 24. Well, I need to go off the chair. Because that's the scripture we're going to read. Luke 21-24. What did I say? Matthew. Matthew. Alright, that's, that's good. That's good. Luke 21-24. And we read together. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Strange thing, I walked into the hall this morning and there's a, a sword in the back of the, the, the hall there and it was lying on the, on the counter. And I looked at the sword and I thought, wow! This could do a lot of damage. I said, Brother Paul, look at this sword. And he looked at it. And I said, this could do a lot of damage. He said, this is a, a, a lethal weapon. <laughs> and it was sharp. Do a lot of damage. He said, there must have been bikies in the place last night. There are two classes. The church says, we're the church. 
They go and have these great evangelistic campaigns, bring the people into church, the women continue with their way of doing it. And the men continue with their way of doing it. They never change their doctrine. But when Luke 21, 24 is fulfilled, brother, we have to change our doctrine. Number two, now we're in the last days. When Jesus at the closing of the Gentile dispensation, I'm not much of a dispensationalist, but I know that there is a dispensation of the Gentiles. Jesus said so in Matthew 24. And then on the 70th week of Daniel, he said, the Gentile days are finishing. Number four, he said, it's got a definite set time of finish. Amen. Pacific. And then a great statement was made, the Jews, amen, are in a nation now to control the world. So Israel, the Jews, are our timepiece. And Israel has turned the United Nations upside down. The Jews in this hour have changed the political scene of the world. They've changed the world stage. And a lot of previous ideas have to be changed. I note what Perez said in October the 29th, 2013. Israel has secret weapons. And I'm not going to read all of that, but in the middle there is a highlighted portion. Of he made this statement, while there is no doubt Israel's military prowess and technology capacity, many both in Israel and among its supporters abroad, would argue that the Jewish state's true secret weapon is none other than the Almighty. Amen. 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 And Revelation chapter 1 8 says, I am He that was, is, and is to come, the Almighty. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Netanyahu, the Prime Minister, pointed out that despite the odds being stacked against them, the Jews had re-established their ancient nation state in direct accordance with the Word of God. And as the Bible clearly states, people of Israel have come home never to be uprooted again, Amen. concluded the Israeli leader. A survey conducted by Israel Today last year found that while nearly all Israelis are proud of their army, a firm majority ultimately places its trust in God for deliverance yes. from the nation's enemies. Yes. Yes. All the seals are now open. The mystery is made known. Hallelujah. And he said on the breach, he's directly coming to the Jews now for the church is finished. Change your doctrine, Pastor. That's right. Change your doctrine, brother. That's right. Number five. Israel is returning and already in the homeland. Yes. Number five, eh, the fig tree putting forth its buds and already is budded out. Number six, but listen, if Israel's already in a homeland, it's already. Amen. Number seven, if the Jews are in a homeland, already there, and the Gentile apostasy has already taken place, we have a president like we have, 
We have nations that broke up like we have. We have atomic bombs hanging in the hangars. We have a church that's lukewarm. We have a church of people that pull themselves together. We have a ministry that patterns the ministry of Jesus Christ for to catch the stone when He comes. What's left to happen? <laughs> tell me, brother. Tell me, sister. What's left to happen? That's right. He said, oh God, we can only see the bitterness of judgment ahead. <laughs> what an hour. What an hour we live in. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. Brother Paul said last week, Brother Ashley, have you, have you seen the trailer of the picture Noah that's coming out on the 28th of March, 2014? I said, no. I went home and looked at it. The official trailer. And it opens with a scene of Noah waking up in bed. And his wife said, what's wrong? What did he tell you? What did he tell you? Noah said, God said, I'm going to destroy the world. That's where we're at. God is going to destroy the world. Number eight. And anyone that don't and anyone that don't have to pick up a Bible, just get a newspaper, turn on the radio. You can see we're at the end. There's no hopes for us. The church is going home soon. And the world's going to dust again. Just exactly what God said would take place. She'll rock her right in there, out of its orbit down there around the sun. She'll burn this time like she went out away from the orbit the other time and was destroyed with water. We're at the end! Amen! And we Gentile people walking around with all our degrees and everything and thinking we're somebody and don't know that our days are numbered. <laughs> Brother, this is true bride doctrine and it has been rejected. <coughs> Number 8A We found we found under the inspiration of the sixth seal It's never It's never been taught before How the earth has to be purified For the millennium That puts the church on notice the opening of the seals requires the abandonment of previous doctrines. The earth is to be purified for the millennium. But in the eagle age, the last age, the prophetic age, where there is to rise prophetic utterance. Look what he said. He said, looking at the giant skyscrapers in the city, Looking upon the fine building structures, that there will be a time when there won't be one stone left upon another. <coughs> we believe that the cities in this great major conflict that's coming will be rocked with atomic powers and millions will die in hours blown to bits. Even the earth shook from its orbit going into the sun. Great heat shall scorch men as the scripture says in the book of Revelation. <coughs> I hear the winds howl. Oh my. He said, you know, my doctrine, you can disagree with it, but that's my hearing from heaven. Mm -hmm. He had an ear to hear. Amen. I hear the winds blowing. I look at the earth, it's out of its orbit. The atomic bomb has thrown her from her orbit. Yonder and she lays into the sun. Oh my. Oh my. This time he's going to blow it into the sun just exactly scientifically right across the center the way God said it would happen. Here it is now. We're at the end time and men still unprepared. 
This time the Bible said there won't be water, but fire. And just a few portions out of its orbit right now, it would burn up with atoms from the sun, just exactly what God said would take place. Your paper, amen. Even our paper, the West Australia. Your paper said that this country here was hotter than it ever been this time of the year. Many places are hottest it's ever been in that time. Where? Why? The atomic bomb has already got this world moving from its orbit into the sun. It's like God said it would be. Brothers, the time has come. We're in the last days. We're in the atomic age. The time has come that they've got a weapon that can shake this world from its orbit in five minutes' time into the sun and cause total annihilation. They couldn't have done that before. But the time has come. This time they're going to throw the same thing right straight back into the sun and burn it up again. Just as perfect as can be. It has to match Sodom. Amen. It was a Gentile nation that was burnt as it was in the days of Lot. So shall it. Did you see what our Governor General, a woman, said in her speech this week? Any man, any woman should be allowed to marry whoever they would. <coughs> Sodom to the core. That's right. Amen. Yes. The Gentile days numbered. Amen. With horrors incumbent. Mm -hmm. Oh my. We're at the end. Now you're a dispensationalist, which I am. I believe that God is too. We're changing dispensations. And brother, if we're changing dispensations, pastor, if we're changing dispensations, you have to change your doctrine. Amen. Look, number 11. The Baptists preach the second coming, the Methodists preach the second coming, the Presbyterians preach the second coming, the Nazarenes preach the second coming, the Pilgrim Hollywoods preach the second coming, that's right. All of them went out to meet the bridegroom. But I've got news for you. Elijah the prophet was on earth. And he said, I've introduced you to him. That was for the elected. That's right. Amen. 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 Amen and amen. I've introduced you to him. And the message. Amen. Of this great messenger that will come in the closing day of the later DC and age, the Pentecostal age, will be the one, hallelujah, that will take the church in the rapture. Exactly. He was raptured himself and he will come with the church to the rapture. Amen. That calls for you to change your doctrine. Amen. Number 14, we're not living in the Pentecostal age. We're living in another age. They've never changed their doctrine. Oh my. Oh my. They wrestle with this. They battle with this. They, they stand the gods. They throw their hands up in the air and they don't know what to do. <coughs> Ministers run this way and that way and every way when they face number 15. Lamb takes the book and walks away. That's all. Redemption is over. It's closed. Door is closed. Gone. Already the book is in his hand. Think of it. Let me tell you a little secret. That calls for a change of doctrine. Number 16. Now notice. Observe. Watch. Now notice. 
but it's to be revealed when the Lamb leaves His intercessory place from the Father. Now that's Revelations 5. Now He takes the book of seals, the book of seals or a book sealed with seals, breaks them and shows them, look, at the end of the age. After the intercessory is over. The church ages has done, finished up. Change your doctrine. Amen. Number 17, this book, amen, is not revealed until the church ages and denominational ages has run out. And there's time no more. See? It's only revealed after the church ages and denominational ages has run out. Yes. And change your doctrine. Amen. The seals are open. It's been revealed to us. Get the revelation, brother. He says, burn it with fire. Burn it with fire. Don't bring your denomination over into the message. This is the word now. Change your doctrine. Everything just ended up on the seventh seal. The revival is over. Change your doctrine, Pastor. Redemption is over. Change your doctrine, Pastor. Yes. Intercession is over. Change your doctrine, Pastor. Oh. His meritorial work is done. Change your doctrine, Pastor. Yes. The day of mercy is over. Change your doctrine, Pastor. Oh my. These quotes that we read in change the whole situation of the Gentile church. It cancels all the former agendas. Amen. It renders null and void all previous doctrines. Number 18, that little prostitute, she recognized it. Why? There was something in there to spark it off. See, she recognized it. You might pour water in gasoline, it'll only hinder it. But let a little fire hit it one time and watch what happens, see. It takes the spark of faith to the Word of God when they know it's the truth. There's something happens. She never asked one more question. And she knew that was the Messiah. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Amen. She caught it! And the hierarchy missed it. She saw Messiah. They saw Beelzebub. She got the hour and the time and the promise and the manifestation. They missed all of it. They never changed their doctrine. Look at number 18. In the day of the seventh angel sounding forth his message, that earthly angel now, because this angel come down from heaven and this was on earth. Angel is messenger. A messenger to the age. And remember... This seventh angel is on earth at the time of this coming. Amen. Amen. Change your doctrine, Pastor. Number 19. What about the rapture? Ooh. That's a, a topic of topics. What about the rapture? Let's deal with this major doctrinal change. Don't switch off the tape now. 
Don't run away. Throw your hands up in the air. Let's see what the seventh angel had to say. He was the one that was vindicated, not what Brother Ashley says, or what this one says, or what that one says. Behold, I send you Elijah, the prophet. Amen. Well, what about the rapture? Well, in this rapture time, Jesus taught that as a parable, and he taught it many different ways. Here's one way. He said that there was ten virgins went out to meet the Lord. He was speaking about this hour we live in. And the common thing that's believed among the churches is this. Jesus will walk out from the skies and say, Come on all you Pentecostals and you Baptists. And our traditional thoughts of it, it won't be like that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Brother, this calls for a change of doctrine. Amen. Amen. In God's word. Amen. 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 Number 20, 10 virgins went out to meet the Lord. All sanctified. All holy. Every one of them sanctified. Five with dilatory. And let their lights go out. Why? They never changed their doctrine. They drifted back. They fell down. And they caved in. Amen. What a, what a situation to be. Much like the children coming out of Egypt, the children of Israel. He said, save them first. <coughs> Brought them out of Egypt. <coughs> then had to destroy them because they didn't continue with their message. Oh my. To continue with this message, brother, you have to change your doctrine. Yes. You have to change your ideas. You have to change your thinking. You have to change your ways. Amen. Yes. Amen. They never changed their doctrine. And they perished in the wilderness. Yes. Oh. This is it. This is it. This is it. Look. Number 22. But since the opening of the seven seals, of them angels just behind the mountain yonder, this has become a new book. It's the things that have been hid, been revealed as God promised in Revelation 10, He would do it. Our traditional thoughts of it won't be like that. God is revealing the reality of it. Amen. Number 23, but to the church, the bride, to the church, the bride, the rapture is a revelation to her. It's revealed to her. Number 24, the true bride of Christ will be waiting for the revelation of the rapture. Hallelujah. Our traditional thoughts of it, it won't be like that. Change your doctrine, pastor. Yes. Oh my. It's the word now. It's the word that counts. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed, amen, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall rise incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Your theory has to give way to revelation. Here it is, it's touchy, brother. Oh, this one. <laughs> See, this one they fly over it as fast as they can fly. Or they duck under it. They avoid looking at this specific quote. They detour around it, they skip it, they ignore it. The carnal mind can't comprehend it, but I'm going to read it to you. Change your doctrine, pastor. Here it comes. Number 
25. No matter if he falls asleep in the first watch, the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh, wherever he falls asleep, what will happen? The trumpet of God shall sound. The last trump will blast forth the same time that the last angel's given his message and the last seal is open. The last trumpet will sound. And the Redeemer come forth to take his redeemed possession, his church, the blood wash. Amen. Hallelujah. Change your doctrine, Pastor. Number 26. And the seven seals have the mystery's head of what it all was. And it's supposed to be open in the last day at the Laodicean age. At the end time, thanks be to God, that, that, that finishes the message to the church. See, the church is all gormed up. That was the expression he used. The church is all polluted with dogmas and creeds and man's idea and man's interpretation. But when the seals are open, change your doctrine to the Word. Amen. Amen. Number 27, you need, you need the Word to take the rapture with it. You need to accept the Word that does it. Change your doctrine. Amen. Amen. Flee Babylon. Flee the confusion. Come into Christ. Let him make known the mysteries. Number 28. And that's what's going to happen one of these days, brother, when the separating time comes. It's the word that does the separating. And to you, you lukewarm church member, that you've tried to impersonate Christianity one of these days, you're going to try and follow that Holy Ghost band, you'll find out your wheels will come off out yonder in the mud somewhere. We got the Holy Ghost. We got the Holy Ghost. How can you have the Holy Ghost and never change your doctrine? That's right. Did you hear that one? How can you have the Holy Ghost and never change your doctrine. Mm. You might be religious. You might sing like angels sing. You might pray all through the night. You might fast 40 days. You might give all your money to the church. But how can you have the Holy Ghost? If you haven't changed your doctrine to the Word of God. Look, number 29. Look, listen, catch. The church is receiving the seven seal book of the revelation of Jesus Christ of the seven seals. And one tenth of them can't receive it. No. Not one tenth of them. Amen. Big difference. True. Big difference. Oh my, the odds, the numbers that stack up. See? That's right. In the days of Moses, Joshua and Caleb were the only two that went over into the promised land. Amen. In the days of John the Baptist, he had six. In the days of Jesus, he had twelve. Brother Graham says, I doubt whether there will be twelve, a dozen in the rapture. Not one tenth of them can receive it. Number 30, these great mysteries that's been unfolded by the seven seals, the Lamb coming forth from eternity and taking the book, these great mysteries that have been unfolded by the seven seals, there's not a place in any denomination would have to quit being a denomination to take it. All the way from Luther down to the Pentecostal oneness, there's not a place that can receive it. Amen. Neither can a man receive it and stay in his denomination. You can't cling to the old 
soul and be the virtuous bride of Jesus Christ. You have to change your doctrine. Amen. 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 Number 31. Here it is. Here it is. Look. The elected listen to his voice. If any man hear my voice right last week. But the unelected ignores. He said nonsense. Go on, he said. We'll take the old school. Don't do that, brother. Burn the old school with fire. The seals are now are open. The mystery has been revealed. Yes. Change your doctrine. Number 32, God couldn't use a man all stuffed full of theology. He can't do it. He can't do it. Because he will always drift right back to that. That's his line of learning. He drifts back to that. So he goes to see something. He tries to drift back to see what the teachers have said about it. But if any man will hear my voice, and will open. I will come in and sup with him. I will sit at his table. Amen. And make all my mysteries known unto him. Number 34, look, listen. Thirty three. 33, them kind, them kind that take the word is God's true bride. Huh? Right? Yeah. Yeah. See what the word says, you see what man's doctrine says. Number 34, listen. We shall be changed in a process to receive the promised son. <laughs> no, brother, where do you get that from? Pastor, where did you get that from? Malachi 4 said, for we shall be changed in a moment. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. To receive the promised Son. Yes. Where is He going to come? Down here on earth? No. Up in the air. Yes. We don't meet Him here on earth. And we couldn't meet Him in these kind of bodies. We've got to be changed and meet Him in the air. Change your doctrine, Pastor. Number 35. We cannot meet Him in these bodies. Uh-huh. Now the old school repudiates that. But Malachi 4 taught us we cannot meet him in these bodies. If we are changed back to a young man and woman, still we can't meet him because we have to meet him in the end. Hallelujah! Amen. <coughs> Number 36, here it comes. Look, 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 look. Hey, all these quotes are rich. They're powerful. They reveal you. Amen. It's the body word of the Son of Man. True. Amen. Number 36. We have to be a different body from this, for we'll be caught up in the air to meet Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Number 37. If ever we meet the Lord in the air, we can't meet Him in this kind of a body. Amen. Because we're earth down. You're dust, you're clay, you're calcium, you're potash. See, you're of an earthly substance. Amen. You're earth bound. But you've got to meet Him in the air. But look at the promise. We're going to receive one hallelujah that will go up in the rapture. It's the spiritual body that goes in the rapture. Is that what he said? Amen. Yes. 
Change your doctrine, preacher. Amen. Change your doctrine, brother. You need a word born body. Amen. And a word born body needs the word to grow up. Amen. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. But there's a fellow out there that's writing to all the pastors around the globe, tearing the messages apart that's going out from this little hall. His email go north, south, east and west. And he's constantly attacking. And he says, let us remember, number 38 quote, let us remember, don't change anything. <laughs> Brother Ashley wants to change this and change that and change the next thing. He says, don't change anything. And he puts a full stop right behind that. But let's see what Brother Brown is. Amen? Let's use the same quotes. The same words, the same line. Every jot and every tittle. Let's look at that quote. He said, but let's remember, don't change anything. Only your ways. Amen? From sin to righteousness. Right. Change that. Mm. Amen. It doesn't say that. Don't change anything. Don't change anything in the word. But change your ways. Amen. Yes, right. From sin to righteousness. Yeah. Amen. They never change their doctrine. You know what Brother Graham said? Don't never end your doctrine with a period. End it with a comma. Amen. He said your tables of doctrine would be alright if you ended with a comma. We believe this in as much as God will make now. Amen. He said change from unbelief to righteousness. Number 39, see there's only one sin, only one sin. How many knows that? That's unbelief. Amen? Amen. That's unbelief. You call upon to change your doctrine. Change your ways. Change from dogmas and creeds to the revealed word. Number 40. We're going to touch on this now in the next couple of meetings. Very, very deep this part. Listen. God gave Abram the promise. And he believed the promise. And it was reckoned to him for righteousness. See, all get the promise. But the royal seed believes the promise. But he gave him a sign of circumcision as a seal of the promise. He said, Hallelujah. God gave him a seal of the confirmation. He had to receive, but he had received his faith. And when he gave him the seal of circumcision, he gave him the seal of circumcision. Then he said, therefore, the circumcision now is the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen. The new birth is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> and he went on to say, and when you believe correctly, God gives it to you. Amen. Hallelujah. When you believe correctly, God gives it to you. The word always corrects the error. And if the people could only see it today, the word corrects the error. The word corrects the theory of the rapture. 
the whole thing is becoming an error. I'm leaving you with one quote, a serious quote, a solemn quote. It comes from the indictment, which he said, I'm indicting this Gentile generation for a second crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Taking his word and making it of no effect by their traditions. The last quote, the final quote, he said, change your ways or you'll go to hell. I leave you with that word spoken by Malachi. Change your ways or you'll go to hell. God bless you. Amen. They never changed their doctrine. But the bride moves to hell. Thank you, Brother Ashley. Brother, can we just stand at this time and we'll sing this lovely hymn, number seven and number eight? Cover me, Lord, cover me, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen.
thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be thy holy name, Lord. Walk on and sing that again. Yes, hallelujah.